Well, good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. Today is Monday, January 10th, 2022. This is edition number 97 of the Morning Devotional. We are currently in season four. We are working our way through the Westminster uh, Shorter Catechism. It's great to have you here with me this morning as we now turn the corner and we are going to begin to discuss over the next number of days uh, the various issues related to the Ninth Commandment. This morning, uh, just briefly uh, looking at questions 76 and 77 of the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Let's pray first, and then we'll look at these, these things together. Our God in heaven, as we bow before you this morning once again to consider your word and consider your moral law, uh, we are reminded that we are unable to keep it. Uh, we have broken each aspect of your law repetitively throughout our lives for all of sin and come short of your glory. But we are thankful for a Redeemer who has kept all of these things perfectly. And, and so we pray this morning that these matters that we discuss and think through would be used of your Spirit to bless us and to help us, to strengthen us in our journey, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, questions 76 and 77 uh, are the uh, topics for this morning's devotional. Question 76 of the Westminster Shorter Catechism asks, which is the Ninth Commandment? And the answer is that the Ninth Commandment is, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Question 77, what is required in the Ninth Commandment? The answer is that the Ninth Commandment requireth the maintaining and promoting of truth between man and man, and of our own and our neighbor's good name, especially in witness bearing. Now, as we have already noted, that when the Shorter Catechism asks the question about the specificity, the specific nature of the commandment itself, for instance, question 76, which is the ninth commandment, it simply quotes from the Word of God the answer. And we read that in Exodus 20 and verse 16, uh, you shall not bear false witness against your uh, neighbor. Well, we note that also uh, in the second giving of the law in Deuteronomy 5, and there in verse 20, we read, and you shall not bear false witness against your, against your neighbor. Now, the, the question, of course, is the aspect of bearing false witness. You know, what does that mean? What, what does it encompass? And the, those are things we're going to unfold here over the next few days. But, of course, bearing false witness is simply lying. It's not telling the truth. It's, it's uh, misrepresenting the truth in some capacity, leaving out aspects of the truth that should be com communicated and told because they may or may not change the impression or the, uh, the, uh, the judgment of another person as they're listening to the story. And so you never leave information out when you're communicating things and you tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. We've heard that before. But question 77 gen uh, generally uh, covers the scope of the Ninth Commandment when it answers it by saying that it requires the maintaining and promoting of truth between man and man and of our own and our neighbor's good name, especially in witness-bearing. Now, in Zechariah chapter 8, and again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because the next edition is going to start dealing with more of the sins related to uh, this commandment. Um, but in Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 16, uh, there we read, These are the things that you shall do. Speak the truth to one another, rendering your gates judgments that are true and make for peace. Um, and so here we have... Uh, clearly given to us in, in this passage, the, sta the statement about truth. And in Acts chapter 25 and in verse uh, 10, again, uh, this issue comes forward for us. There we read, uh, but Paul said, I am standing before Caesar's tribunal where I ought to be tried. To the Jews I have done no wrong, as you yourself know very well. If then I am a wrongdoer and have committed anything for which I deserve to die, I do not seek to escape death. But if there is nothing to their charges against me, no one can give me up to them. In other words, he's not going to do anything that's going to avoid judgment. He is simply going to tell the matters as they are. And in 3 John uh, 12, you understand that the letters of John, the second and third letters of John, do not have chapters because they're very brief 
uh, book, so you just say 3 John 12 to reference verse 12 there. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. And so here we have a man who is, his good name is being upheld. And then finally, in Proverbs uh, chapter 14, um, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse, verses 5 and 25, we read, A faithful witness does not lie, but a false witness breathes out lies. And then verse 25, A truthful witness saves lives, but one who breathes out lies is deceitful. So the Word of God says much about this matter of truth. Of course, God is truth, and so truth matters. It's important. It's vital. We live in a world that misrepresents the truth all the time. It seeks to do so for many different reasons, political gain, personal gain, uh, relational gain, financial gain, I, you, you name it, people will bend, twist, cover, uh, misrepresent the truth in many different ways. Um, but as Christians, we are to be truth tellers because God himself is, is truth. Well, I trust these times are a blessing for you. If you have any comments or questions or criticisms, you can contact me. The way to do that is there before you on the screen. And so until the Tuesday edition, when we look deeper into the issues related to the requirements that are on us as, as relates to the ninth commandment. May the Lord bless you today. May you walk with him, serve him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. God bless.